Oh, what's up guys, Teacher Paul up here, and today we are reacting to an uh, interesting video. Canada and Denmark have a land border. <laughs> How is that even possible? This video was requested by someone called Powermonger. Thank you for the request. And they said, here is a fun one about Denmark and Canada. Cheers. So, guys, this video is here on my Danish um, Nordic channel. But if you want to see more about Canada, then go to my official main channel. That's where we do a lot of other stuff about Canada. But about Nordic, it's this channel. And if you guys want to request a video just like Power Munger did, the link is in the description or the pinned comment, or just copy it from the screen. Let's check this out. Last month, the world. Oh, a shout out to the channel who made this video. Let me just pull up the channel. It's called Real Life Lore. Okay, let's go. Last month, the world's geography just changed forever. Canada and Denmark are two totally different nations located thousands of miles apart from one another on different continents separated by the entire Atlantic Ocean. But in one significant way, the two nations share one major geographic similarity. Until just last month in June of 2022, they were two of only 17 countries across the world that shared a land border with just a single other country. The others being Brunei's single border with Malaysia, the Dominican Republic and Haiti each bordering the other on the island of Hispaniola, the Gambia that's surrounded by Senegal, the Republic of Ireland and the United Kingdom each bordering the other on the island of Ireland, Monaco surrounded by France, Vatican City and San Marino each surrounded by Italy, Lesotho surrounded by South Africa, Papua New Guinea stuck with- How does he say it? I, I always thought it was Lesotho. I said Lesotho. Lesotho surrounded by South Africa, Papua New Guinea stuck with Indonesia on one island, and it's interesting, I have lived in Lesotho, um, more specifically in Maseru, and it's interesting because it's a country within a country. <laughs> this is literally within um, South Africa. That is awesome. Um, shout out to everyone from Bloemfontein, Ladysmith, and Maseru. Uh, Maseru Prep, if you guys, <laughs> if you guys ever studied there. Uh, we might have been classmates. Papua New Guinea stuck with Indonesia on one island, and Timor-Leste stuck with them on another island. Portugal stuck on the Iberian Peninsula with Spain, Qatar stranded on a peninsula blocked by Saudi Arabia, and South Korea stuck on another peninsula blocked in by North Korea. Until last month, Denmark's only land border was with Germany to their immediate south, while Canada's only land borders were with the United States across the south and the west with Alaska. But despite being located thousands of miles away on two different continents, Canada and Denmark are a lot closer than you probably initially thought because there goes the flat earthers with their theories <laughs> as of the 11th of June 2022, they each officially border each other by land. And that means that they've each removed themselves from the already small list of countries that only border a single other country. But how can a country in Europe and another in North America even border each other by land? Well, it's because their border is a very tiny one and it's located right here in the literal uh, middle of nowhere on a small, barren, Greenland. uninhabited rock of an island known as Hans Island. Today, Denmark and Canada both split the island roughly 60-40 respectively across a border that's only a tad longer than 1,200 <laughs> meters. That's so cool. This is what makes them both technically bordering nations now. But for decades before just last month, the issue of who between them actually owned this insignificant and pointless island was an unresolved territorial dispute that generated one of modern history's friendliest, good-natured, and wackiest conflicts known as the Whiskey War. The whiskey war so they just decided to split it let's let's split it two ways that's it <laughs> and now they're bordering each other was a very rare territorial dispute for both nations and particularly for canada who also shares the longest international border in the world with the united states further to the south and the west wow. stretching for nearly nine thousand kilometers in length from a more european perspective hey if somebody wants to build a wall, <laughs> good luck. 
<laughs> to separate Canada from the United States. I'm kidding, it's a joke. That is a length of border equivalent to the distance between Portugal and Bangladesh. Wow, but despite bro. this massive length, the border between the United States and Canada has been generally calm and peaceful for most of the past two centuries, with few disagreements. The only notable disagreement that they have over land today is the maritime border between the two nations off the coast of the US state of Maine and the Canadian province of New Brunswick. Here, the Canadians insist that the maritime maritime border between themselves and the Americans is here, while the Americans conversely insist that the maritime border is actually here. Oh, it doesn't on, really matter all that much, save for a couple small islands that are stuck in between the two competing claims here. Machias Seal Island, home to a single controversial Canadian-built lighthouse and visited often by American tourist boats, and the even smaller and insignificant North Rock. Legally speaking, both the United States and Canada maintain overlapping claims of sovereignty to both of these uninhabited and meaningless islands, which means that they sort of just exist in this weird legal grey zone. The final specks of the North American continent north of the Rio Grande that haven't yet been settled. But somehow even less significant and yet more controversial than these little islands is Hans Island, which for nearly half a century oh, existed man. as a Come diplomatic on, a thorn in the the side of Canadian Danish relations. Okay, I said it's a rock, but what if under that rock there's a gold mine, a diamond mine, or, or oil, right? <laughs> I was thinking, how, how petty could you be to be disputing just a small piece of rock, piece of land? Um, but, bro, honestly, yeah, it, it could be like a, a huge, huge economy booster. I don't know. Who knows? with each claiming the entirety of the island for themselves. The conflict dates back to Canada's control over Ellesmere Island and Denmark's control over Greenland, and the narrow Nary Strait that flows in between them. For most of history, the exact maritime border between the Canadians and the Danes here was legally undefined and generally assumed to be the strait itself. Because, well, it's a frozen wasteland where nobody actually lives permanently. The closest actual permanently inhabited settlements are alert in Canada. Canada 198 kilometers away, and Sarara Paluk in Greenland 349 kilometers away, and they are collectively home to less than 150 people. This area was simply never really geopolitically important until in the 1970s, when people started figuring out that there could be valuable things like oil and natural gas in the area. And so in 1972, a team of both Canadians and Danes began working on the first legally defined maritime boundary between each of of their big Arctic islands. They established 127 points of latitude and longitude across the Nares Strait roughly in the center between Ellesmere and Greenland, and then drew a line between all of these points to formally mark out the border. But there was a small anomaly. Around here, the strait is only about 35 kilometers wide, and this speck of rock called Hans Island is pretty much dead in the center of it, <laughs> which is why both the Canadian and Danish surveying teams each claimed it for their own respective countries. Unable to come to any kind of agreement, the 1970s era maritime treaty between them simply left the border in the Nares Strait between points 122 and 123 blank. With it's just a matter of who wants it more, I guess. Hans Island itself, an undefined territory in the middle. They basically just decided to kick the issue of ownership over the island down the road for someone else to figure out at a later time. It's just that nobody at the time probably expected that a later time would mean about half a century and the collective wow. efforts of 26 different foreign ministers. And they still for remember decades about in between this? then and 2022, Canadian and Danish soldiers took alternating turns visiting the island and raising their own respective flags, taking down the other's flag and placing yeah, a bottle on. of their favorite national liquor. In 1984, a group of Canadian soldiers visited by helicopter raised up their flag and left a bottle of Canadian club whiskey for the Danes who oh, they knew would come by later. And sure enough, the Danes did by respectfully taking down and folding up the Canadian flag, raising the Danish flag, and replacing the Canadian club whiskey with a bottle of their own Danish schnapps, along with a sign which wow. simply read, Welcome to the Danish Island. 
This humorous process kept going back and forth for decades until it got a bit more contentious and a little less friendly in 2005. Oh, in that on. year, the it's Canadian spoiled. Defense Minister at the time, Bill Graham, decided to set foot on the island personally to raise up the Canadian flag and assert his nation's sovereignty to it. Just five days after Doesn't his visit, the Danish government filed an official protest to the Canadian government. While the Danish Deputy Premier of Greenland publicly stated that Hans Island had been occupied by Canada. Tensions were at an all-time high, and the Danes decided to send over this fearsome what? warship to the island to reassert Danish control. But then the prime that was that was an overkill. Why? Why? That's a, kind of like a, a mini battleship. Ministers of both countries began to call for peace and calm, and both the Canadian and Danish foreign ministers agreed to meet thousands of miles away from Hans Island in New York City to discuss the terms of diplomacy. During that meeting, they essentially it's, agreed to solve the matter diplomatically, but they each continued insisting that Hans Island was rightfully theirs in entirety. So in practice, it didn't really go anywhere, although the Danish foreign minister did agree that he would cancel his ship's mission to the island and that he wouldn't take down the Canadian flag and rehoist the Danish flag, at least for a while. Because okay, so I understand that they, they were fighting over the island, but why? W was there like a, a popular demand for this? Uh, did the population request? Were they pressuring them to, to... What happened? Like, why was this in their minds? Why were they trying to solve an issue that wasn't really an issue, right? I would suppose they have a lot more problems to take care of, but, you know, <laughs> they were meeting. Bro, they went to New York. Oh, man. I wonder if the population was, you know, demanding something, demanding an answer. Beginning in 2012, there were renewed calls within both countries to solve the issue by simply splitting the island in half. Yes. And then, six years later from there, in 2018, they each announced a new joint task force to settle the border dispute once and for all, which was finally officially agreed upon another a four years force. later, on the 10th of June, 2022, with roughly 60% of the island going to Denmark by extension of Greenland's own control, and the other 40% going to Canada's oh, no, none of it territory work. and pretty much the only reason why it took so long to actually solve why not 50 was 50? that it was actually pretty convenient politically for both nations to continue keeping it unsolved canada and denmark oh, okay. have been allies why? with one another for a very long time and have enjoyed friendly relations for decades going back to them each being founding members of the nato alliance in 1949 if you pay closer attention to the actual dates when the Canadians and Danes made their highly publicized visits to the island, raising their flags and uh, leaving behind why. their national liquor, they generally always took place soon before election season in each country. It was an easy method for both governments to just kick up some patriotic feelings and sentiments uh, right before okay. an election that literally had no risk or downside at all. But it was a political tool until some political tool came along and, and spoiled the whole fun. The Whiskey War, it, it sounds like a nice, healthy way of, you know, um, <laughs> leaving a present for your your ally. But wow, look at this. This is a beautiful place, Canada. Both Copenhagen and Ottawa had obvious political Ottawa. incentives to keep dragging out the irrelevant conflict for decades, especially once it was discovered that the island didn't have any resources, uh, and any potential oil or gas nearby would probably be too expensive to drill and economically unviable. Hans Island was always politically valuable to keep contested, but then in 2022, it suddenly became politically valuable instead to actually solve it. In February, the Russians oh shocked goodness. much of the world when they decided to settle their border disputes with Ukraine by launching an enormous oh, wow. and bloody invasion with hundreds of thousands of troops, culminating in the biggest war seen on the European continent since the end of World War II that has already caused tens of thousands yeah. of violent deaths and millions of refugees. Accompanied by a newfound global sense of uncertainty and fear for the future, not seen since the end of the first Cold War. What These images of, of Ukraine is, is like really, really sad. And the first time I saw them, 
was in a music video from Kalush Orchestra. They actually recorded a music video in the ruins. Oh man, it's, it's a sad thing. Better way for the governments of Canada and Denmark, two NATO allies, to place a spotlight on Russia's own military aggression in Europe by solving their own long standing territorial dispute over Hans Island I peacefully. The okay. matter is all the more pressing to the Arctic members of NATO, like Canada and Denmark, along with the United States, Iceland, and Norway. Because in recent years, the Russians have been rapidly remilitarizing their region of the Arctic with airfields, radar stations, high Highly increased oh troop deployments, and even the presence of nuclear missiles and torpedoes. As the Arctic continues to warm throughout this century, it will become one of the greatest arenas of conflict in the new 21st century Cold War between NATO on the one side and the Russians and Chinese over on the other. And okay. When they say Cold War, talking about the Arctic Circle, it, it kind of makes me uh, want to make a joke about it because. Cold War, Arctic, anyways. Um, but what I, what I want to say is that this is a very nice overview. Because normally we see the map the way it is. You know, everybody knows uh, the, the, the map. But when you see it in this angle, it, it's very interesting to see how it's split in the middle. It's, it's very nice. Uh, it's, I think we should look at the globe in different angles to see how close things really are to each other. Looking forward into this inevitable future, keeping an unresolved territorial dispute open between two NATO allies within the Arctic, no matter how friendly and cordial, would have been an unwise decision geopolitically. And so, the time had finally come for Denmark and Canada to solve it once and for all, and formally become neighbors by land as well as by sea. After all, a lot of what's happening today are the consequences of what happened yesterday, last year, and even last century and beyond. Keeping up with current events is essential to your ability to understand the way our world works. And I get to do that every single day by reading all of the new short articles posted to Morning Brew every morning. Okay. And that's what I love the most. This is a sponsored message. I don't have a sponsor and Morning Brew does not sponsor me, but you guys can go check it out um, on the Real Life Lore channel. Pretty good, pretty well explained. Um, thank you so much for this video, Power Monger. This is um, an interesting, interesting video. Is it a geopolitical video? Probably. And... Yeah, um, very interesting how things played out, why, very clear, very well explained, really like this one. So thank you for the video. If you want to request a video, here's the link. And guys, as I said, I don't have a sponsor, but if you want to sponsor any of my projects, there is a wish list, which I'm going to pull up um, when you get, you know, when you go to this website, um, you will see the wish list over there. And there are a few things that I want to do, a few projects, and you can check it out there and you can sponsor the channel or request the video um, for more content. Thank you guys for watching. I'll see you in the next one. Bye bye. Now you can get full access to exclusive content, special reactions to shows, series, anime, full movies, and even request a video of your choice. Just become a YouTube member or join Buy Me a Coffee today. Find out more, the link is in the description. Never break, always fight, never quit, do it right, play the game.